I think he'll get knocked out. I know that this is such a big fight against Kell Brook that it's only bringing me, bringing the best out of me, really. All the talking that we'll do with our fists come fight night. Hopefully after that, we'd have to talk again. Hello and welcome to this exclusive Boxing Insider special. We're joined in Bolton by Amir Khan, just days to go. He had this huge one against Kelbrook on the 19th of February. What's the main emotion now, Amir? How are you feeling just a few days out? To be honest with you, I'm very calm, um, very chill. Just um, can't wait for the fight now. I know that, you know, I've done all the hard work. Like, we've not left any stone unturned. We've done literally everything. And our fitness is great, power's there, strength is there. I'm not, I've sp been just sparred yesterday 12 rounds. We've got another 12 rounds tomorrow. So I've not left anything out. I've done more than I've ever, ever done before. And at the same time, you know, my mentally, mentally, I used to think, oh, if I do too much training, I can overtrain. But we've got doctors with us on board. We've got um, a nutritionists with us, making sure that as soon as they see you dipping a little bit, they'll give you maybe half a day off, not a full day off, half a day off. And, uh, or they'll tell you, look, uh, take the morning off, you train in the evening. So, but the body's got so strong from the training I've been doing. And this is why Terence Crawford, in my opinion, is the pound for pound best fighter in the world, because is how hard they train. Now, if I had this type of training in my early days, I don't think, I think I'd be unbeaten as well because it just makes you a machine. So come fight night, obviously, we're gonna see. Give us some insight into the training camp. What have you been doing that, that maybe you hadn't done early in your career? They do a lot of running over here, a lot of leg work, a lot of circuit training for conditioning. Um, swimming as well, so including that as well. So we do all that, but then, you're doing a lot of sparring as well. Now, when you say sparring, you, we are used to normally doing three minute rounds of sparring with a minute break. Nah, it's a bit different there. Four minute rounds, every round you do of training, pad work, mitt work, sparring is four minute rounds. Only two weeks out of the fight, it goes down to three minutes again. And with a, with a, with a, with a one minute break, whereas normally it's four minute rounds with 30 seconds. So. Obviously, that's going to condition you even more. Uh, you're doing hill runs, you're going in altitude, you know, you're going up in the mountains, seven, eight thousand feet high, training up there, air's thin, and you're still sparring at that high, high work rate. Three, four sparring partners I had at a time. You know, while I'm in there, they come in fresh after three, four rounds. So, um, like I said, I've done everything I needed to. I've never had a training camp that's gone so smooth, without injuries, that's gone so well. And, um, I'm just glad that, you know, I'm, I was always thinking, and when you read comments, people at 35, they're gonna be too old, you're not gonna be at your best, you're gonna be shot. But nah, man, I mean, I feel better now than I've ever done before because, and to be pushed like this, thinking that I am older, how am I doing it? Because, you know, I just say like God's on my side. Um, it's just that I know that this is such a big fight against Kell Brook that it's only bringing me bringing the best out of me, really. The sessions have been so brutal, but I wonder when training's been at its toughest, what has been the key motivation for you? What's been the main thing driving you? My motivation is to um, you know, go into the fight and to win this fight because the fight's been talked about for many, many years. It's about me now going in there, doing a clinical job, showing why I'm the better fighter. And look, it shows how much of a big fight this is. It's sold out in six minutes. It's all on the biggest platform, Sky, Ox Office. It's an opportunity to give uh, the public, you know, the chance to see uh, a rivalry match. And I want to make sure I'm on my A game. I'm on my A game going into this fight. I cannot go in there without hard training, without not being focused. On, you know, mentally, I'm so prepared for this because I know how hard I worked. If I didn't work hard for it, then I would have been like, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's going to go okay. Well, because I know how hard I worked, I'm going to be more than ready. What have you learned about yourself in this training camp? Learned. What have you lost? What have you got left? You know what? I've learned a lot about myself. A lot about myself. In this camp especially, being around Crawford, sparring with him, um, being around Bormack and the team, I've learned that I can, I can keep on going stronger. And, and I have it in me to push myself. You see, when you think you've won world titles, you've won fights, you've lost a fight, a couple of fights, you might think, okay, it might be that path on the, towards the end. Nah, 
uh, by this having this training camp, the way it's gone and the way I felt outrunning young fighters, outspeed speeding young fighters, outsparing young young fighters. Um, I thought to myself, wow, I've got another couple of years left in me if I wanted, you know. How much does this Amir Khan, how different is this version from the one we saw in 2004 at the Olympics, 2012, the last time you were world champion? I think I'm, I'm like the old 2004 days. You know, the 2004 Olympics were the days when I was at the peak of my career and I was, I was not maybe in my peak of my career, but I was at a stage where I was being pushed so hard as a fighter that it's happened now again, where I'm being pushed so hard as a fighter. And I used to think, oh, you know, as I'm getting old, I don't need to be pushed now. I know I've got the experience, but nah, nah. As a fighter, you have to still be pushed. I mean, look at the greats out there. Floyd Mayweather, I mean, uh, Sugar Leonard. I've seen how hard they trained. And I used to think, oh, it's only clips. But no, they trained like this. Look at Crawford, why he's the best out there. It's because he trained very, very hard. So this is what they do here. When you go into a camp, with Bomak, they take you in the mountains, so you're away from everyone, there's nothing to do there, and they say, listen mate, it's time to work now. You've got no, no friends there, <clears throat> and even if you're tired, nah, keep on going. You have to do one more round, one more round. And, and, and that's why these guys are great, because it's the training that they've done coming up to the fight. It's quite incredible talking about the Olympics back in 2004, nearly 18 years ago since that. How do you reflect on all that you've been through, all that you've achieved till that, up, up till now? Um, I achieved a lot, yeah, it's been crazy. You know, I look back and I think, you know, lot, I could have been happy with a world title. I would have been happy with a Commonwealth title, but no, I, I wanted to do a lot more, you know, winning number of different world titles, number of different international titles. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been brilliant, you know. Up, having my name up against like, the likes of uh, Floyd Mayer with uh, Manny Pacquiao. Um, going up and down weight categories, fighting the likes of Canelo. Now, we know how good Canelo is. Pound for pound also, he's up there, either him or Crawford. Fighting Crawford and fighting like that. So if you look, in my, in my career, I played for two pound for pound best fighters. Um, and also won many world titles, won three world titles in my career. I mean, it's brilliant, you know. I mean, I wouldn't change for anything, you know. Um, but if I had to go back and do it all again, it'd be very hard. Because I know how hard blood, sweat and tears and injuries that's got me through to this stage. And now, towards my later end of my career, where I'm 35, this is a stage where I've had no injuries. And I'm thinking, this is a time when you normally get injuries, but I've been quite lucky. Are there any regrets at all? Or all the disappointments you've had, is that all part of the journey? And all the disappointments I had were part of the journey, really. And my motivation, that was, if I didn't have them, Disappointments. I don't think I'd be in this position now. Um, yeah, um, I mean, what kept me going and kept me going strong was by not having them mistakes made again. When you look at the fights you've taken, I guess the one that stands out for most fans is going up two weights to take on Canelo. When you look back on that now, was that the right decision? You speak about it with pride, the fact that you, you put yourself in the ring against the best when I guess everything was against you. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean... Uh, and I was winning that fight as well, so to be in a fight with someone like Canelo, who's one of the greatest out there, who would be known as one of the greatest fighters out there. Um, obviously, we knew that he had a lot of power. I mean, he knocked out guys who were like three weight categories above him, you know? And um, that's the power he's got. I mean, he's just a machine he is. And I did so well against him, obviously winning uh, till, he, till, he, till he caught me with a very good shot. But, I mean, um, there's, there's no... There's no uh, anger there or there's no, um, I don't feel like there was some, I did something wrong there. I mean, look, if you want to be great in life, you have to take chances. And that was a chance I took, which, le which didn't work out for me, but it told me a lot about myself. That I'm never scared of anyone. How have you found the fame? The fact is you spent more than half of your life in the public eye, which is quite incredible. 17, you shot onto the scene yeah. of the Olympics, 35 years old now, it's been, an amazing journey and it feels like everybody's witnessed every single stage of it. Yeah, it's been tough. It's not been easy because, you know, not only are boxing fans that watch me, it's non-boxing fans that want to see me fight and they know what I do. I've got TV shows 
uh, like a family reality show as well. I do a lot of TV uh, appearances and stuff like that. So I'm always keeping myself busy and that's because obviously, because of boxing, I respect that. But it's how I've portrayed myself, you know, outside the boxing ring as well. Doing my charity work, which I enjoy doing and helping and going to schools, giving kids talks and also, um, you know, um, doing these TV shows, which obviously if there's any other fighters who are watching this, you know, they should do that as well. They should follow my footsteps because that's the way you get that recognition. And through that recognition, you know, you know through that recognition is how you build your fan base up. And from with that, build up, when you have that big fan base, obviously more things, more deals come to on, onto you. Obviously you get bigger fights as well. People want to see you fight. People want to, promoters want you to fight. So yeah. There's been so many benefits for you living in the public eye. And as you say there, the, the charity work that you've been able to do as well has been brilliant. I, I wonder, do you ever wonder what it would be like to, to live a, a really private life, to, to just be able to live and walk around Bolton carefree, knowing that people aren't watching your every move? You know what? I kind of I do taste that though sometimes. Um, when I go to America, I'm, like when I was in Colorado, I, well, I did assume, I, well, I still had a few people recognise me. But to be honest with you, I was in a stage where I was like, oh, no one will know me here so I could walk around. But I did get the opportunity to walk around like normal at times and no one bothered you at all. So, yeah, and, but to be honest with you now, because I've grown up, grown up with having that many people who know you, all it, all it is is just a quick hello and that's, uh, that's all it is. People just want to say hi, take a quick picture and it's done. So it's not a bad thing. I kind of think that's like a motivation. It kind of pushes me a little bit more. Let's bring it back to this fight against Kell Brook. And when you look at the, the rivalry that's been there, where's he been on your radar over the last 10 years? This fight, um, it's, it's definitely been on my radar because obviously um, it was such a massive fight in, in the UK and it's been talked about. So I think the fight would have been even bigger if when we were both world, world champions and both, world, had, both of us had world titles. But obviously the fight could have been made then because I was with Golden Boy Promotion and also I was campaigning in America, fighting over there, the big names like Zab Judah and, and Daniel Garcia and all the other guys. So what I did was obviously I thought that fight with Kel will happen in the UK and that'll happen one day. Obviously whenever we try to get close to that fight, someone will come up. A Saudi Arabia deal would be on the table, which no one would turn down. You know, when they're throwing big, big money to you, you would never turn that down. Then you've got, um, then, then I had the opportunity to fight Crawford, pound for pound, one of the best fighters. I didn't want to turn it, then I couldn't turn that down. But look, what I said uh, all my career happened. I mean, I said I was going to become a world champion. I said I was going to go to the Olympics. I said that I will fight Kelbrook one day and it will happen. And I will beat Kelbrook one day. Now that's time has come where I am going to fight him. And it's only um, almost a fortnight away now where I'm going to be in the ring with him and we can set a last score. Everybody's got their own opinion about what's going to happen this far. I don't think anybody truly knows, but you're going to be in that ring. What are the key things we need to look out for? How do you think the fights can be won? I mean, look, Kel, we know he's a very good counter puncher. Um, I honestly believe and think and probably know that Kel can't take a punch. I know that I've always had that people saying to me, I'm going to take the best shot. Yeah, you know, I've run on to shots, I've been caught. But if you look at the guys who have put me down, I've been big guys, the likes of Canelo, for example, Danny Garcia, and, um, and, and, and Crawford put me down. Obviously, I got back up on my feet. But, but if you look at Kel Brook, I mean, a jab to knock you down, to hurt you. I mean, he has been hurt many times. And I think the, the way he goes on about it, that, oh, he's some, some fighter who's, who can't be touched, or can't be hurt. I think you'll all be shocked come fight night, you'll see. I mean, we, we, the main thing is, is I'm going to go into this fight and I'm going to put a clinical performance on, which is going to show why I was always a better fighter. I mean, then I think the thing that's going to be said after that is, oh, the fight should have happened five years ago. It would have been a different scenario, you know? It would have been a different outcome. You can never win in a situation like this, but I'm just going to go in there and do what I do best. And obviously I just can't see him doing anything in this fight. Do you respect one another, do you think? Will there be a handshake at some point after the fight? I tried to shake his hand, which you probably see on gloves are off. Um, obviously, he didn't want to. And then um, after the fight, look, end of the day, it looks a sport and I respect that. And, and, and I think that all this talking that's been happening for many years, I think, look, 
it's a fight that's one of the quickest to ever sell. In six minutes, I mean, to have, this, to, to have the fight sold out. Every TV channel was after it, from Dazan to, to Sky. So it's a massive fight, you know what I mean? So um, I just feel that, um, look, this is a big fight that no, people don't want to miss. And, and yeah, after the fight, I will definitely shake his hand. Because at the end of the day, I'm a gentleman. It's a sport. We're going to put everything to a side. We will talk and we will, you know, all the talking we'll do with our fists come fight night. Hopefully after that, we'd have to talk again, but we will shake hands. What do you think he's got left? What do you think happens on the 19th of February? I think he'll get knocked out. Yeah. How long is it going to take? Could be one, could be 12. I'm not giving the best around, but I mean, I think it'll happen within the 12 rounds.